In this tutorial, we'll look at some techniques for applying color to black and white images. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial, along with the sample images you can download to try out the steps yourself. I have PaintShop Pro open in the Edit workspace. I'm bringing in this image to edit. The first step with black and white images is to make sure that the color depth is at least RGB 16 bits. I can do this in the Image Increase Color Depth menu. 16 bit supports 16.7 million colors, as opposed to just 256 with 8 bit. This is why, when scanning a black and white image, you should always choose to scan in full color. I need to have both my Layers and Materials palettes open. This can be done in the Palettes menu or by pressing F6 and F8. In the Layers palette, I'll click the New Layer icon and choose New Raster Layer. I'll name the layer Skin and set the Blend Mode to Color Legacy. This means that the textures and shadows from the original image will show through and the applied color will be partially translucent. With this layer active, I'll start painting in some color. I'll zoom in on the face and click the foreground swatch to choose my first color. I'll use the color wheel to find a skin tone, and because I'll need to get the same color back later for painting over the arms, I'll click Add to Palette. I'll create a new palette called Colorize and name this color Skin Tone. Now I'll click the Paintbrush tool and adjust the brush size by pressing the Alt key while dragging the mouse. The brush hardness is around 50 so that the color will be feathered, or faded, toward the edges of the brush. While zoomed in closely, I'll use a small brush size and drag all around the face, being careful to stop at the edges. Then I'll fill in the rest. In this area, I'll need to reduce the brush size a bit. For the dress, I'll add a new layer with the same blend mode. I'll use some creative license and choose a light blue paint color which I'll add to the same palette. With a slightly harder brush, I'll use a small brush size when tracing around the border, and it's recommended to paint using a series of short strokes, rather than a few long strokes. This is because you'll probably find yourself needing to undo sometimes, and it's better to undo a little at a time than a lot at once. Now I can increase the brush size for filling in. I painted blue over the flower on the dress and over the purse, but I can go over these areas with new colors and small brush sizes. When zoomed in very closely, things look messy, but everything looks better when zoomed out. For the arms, I'll make the skin layer active and go back to the skin tone swatch from before. I can hover over a swatch to see its name. For the rest of the image, I've added layers for the walls of the house, which I've gone over in red, another for the steps, and one for greenery. I've also added in some hair color. One nice thing about having separate layers for separate parts of the image is that I can go back and adjust that one part. For example, if I want to change the dress from blue to orange, I can make the dress layer active. I'll choose a light orange color and activate the Color Changer tool. I'll click anywhere that's blue to switch to orange. The purse and flower remain as they are since they're not blue. When I'm finished, if I save this image as a PSP file, all of the layers will be preserved. If I save as another format, such as JPEG, all layers will be merged into a single layer. Now I'll demonstrate a second technique using this wedding photo. I'll increase color depth first, and as before, I'll add a layer, and this one will contain all of my color changes. This layer also will have normal blend. This time, instead of painting directly onto the canvas, I'll mark off the areas to paint in advance. From the Selection toolbar, I'll choose Freehand Selection. Then I'll zoom in and carefully trace around the groom's face. This is done with one long dragging operation. With my paintbrush, I'll choose any color and fill in the entire masked area. The paint doesn't go anywhere outside this area. 
Then I can reduce the layer blend to get the face back. For adjusting the color, I'll choose Adjust, Hue and Saturation, Hue Saturation Lightness. I'll click Colorize and adjust the sliders to get just the color I want. Then I'll press Ctrl D to unselect. To outline the uniform, I'll use the Smart Selection brush. I'll return to the background layer where clicking on a color selects everything of the same color. I'll set the mode to Add so that every time I click, I'll add more to the selected area. Now I'll activate the color layer, and this time I'll use the Flood Fill tool to paint this entire area with one click. I'll use Colorize again to get just the right uniform color. I'll repeat these steps to give the woman a red dress. I'll increase the Smart Selection Tolerance and use a smaller brush for small areas. Even though I'm colorizing an image, I can uncheck Colorize and play with the colors here as well. One nice thing about PaintShop Pro is there are a number of different ways that you can colorize an image, and this is what makes the application so powerful and fun to use. I've done some more colorizing, adding hair and skin colors, even coloring the cameo. And I'll add one final touch, giving the newly married bride a rosy cheek. I'll use Paintbrush, with this brush size, a pink color, and a very low brush hardness. One click adds a nice glow. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on colorizing. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, please follow the link in the description below, which will take you to this tutorial page in Corel's Discovery Center. Here you'll find a written version of this tutorial, along with the sample images you can download and follow along.